This lecture is about the thoracic anatomy and the interventional procedures that go along with the thoracic anatomy. I first just want to take you through the lecture and just kind of scroll through that quickly uh, just to kind of an, as an overview. So a lot of this is terms that you need to know. Of course, the word cardio refers to heart. The word vascular refers to blood vessels. So cardiovascular system uh, refers to the heart and blood vessels. Uh, all blood vessels have three layers, the inner layer, the middle layer, and the outer layer, the lumen. Um, all arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart. Of course, there is the exception of the pulmonary artery, which carries deoxygenated blood away from the heart. Veins carry deoxygenated blood. Of course, the exception is the pulmonary vein. Here, um, with the blood flow through the heart, you will need to watch the video titled Blood Flow Through the Heart, and then you can fill in this blank space with the blood flow through the heart. Here's some more terms. The systemic circulation is from the heart to the rest of the body, back to the heart. Pulmonary circulation from the heart to the lungs, back to the heart. Systole refers to contraction of the heart. Diastole, relaxation of the heart. The heart has three layers also, its most inner layer, a middle layer, an outer layer. It's important to note that the outer layer of the heart and the inner layer of the pericardium, those two are the same thing. So the epicardium and visceral pericardium are the same structure. They just have two names. Then the outer layer of the pericardium. The per pericardium is a double-walled sac that the heart is contained in. So this uh, gives a good demonstration of that. The term angiogram is more of a broader generic term. It refers to any blood, uh, any radiograph of a blood vessel, so it's not specific to an artery or vein. Where arteriogram is a radiograph of an artery after contrast is injected, a venogram, radiograph of a vein after contrast is injected. Then I get into the actual anatomy, and this is just kind of uh, the anatomy summarized in words. And so um, it'll be important to read over this. The veins, okay, and then the actual interventional procedure. Now, of course, this is a very watered down, simplified uh, explanation of these procedures, uh, but still important information, just the basics that you need to know. An embolization procedure is a procedure that occludes a blood vessel. For example, a bronchial artery, uh, patient may have hemoptysis, which is coughing up blood, so they will have the bronchial artery um, embolized. Thrombolysis is a procedure that breaks down or dissolves a blood clot, where thrombectomy is the actual removal of a blood clot. Example of that would be a pulmonary artery for pulmonary embolism. Angioplasty is making the lumen of a blood vessel bigger by inflating a balloon. A stent is a tube or other device uh, that creates a passage in a tubular structure. And atherosclerosis, uh, that is the bread and butter of um, interventional world. Um, atherosclerosis is the accumulation of plaque, and that is the cause of many, many, many diseases. That It all starts with atherosclerosis, that accumulation of plaque. An endograph um, is basically the same thing as a stent, but there is fabric covering the stent to go along with it. That, of course, is uh, most commonly uh, used for an aneurysm, like in the aorta. A biopsy is a sample of tissue taken from the body in order to examine it more closely. Then you have chest tube placement, and there's chest tube placement done for various reasons. One could be for pneumothorax, would be removal of air from the pleural space. Thoracentesis is removal of fluid from the pleural space. And pleurodesis is a procedure that involves the adhesion of the two pleura, meaning the visceral and parietal pleura. Both of those layers are adhered together with the goal of eliminating the pleural space altogether. So that would be for, let's say, your cancer patient who has a recurring pleural effusion and it keeps happening and keeps happening. So the, the idea is just um, get rid of the pleural space altogether and then maybe the fluid won't accumulate there. Thermal ablation. Thermal ablation is using a heat source, usually a laser or radio frequency, to destroy tissue. Um, so that could be done 
for any thoracic malignancy, um, any cancer within the thorax or anywhere in the body for that matter, um, you could use uh, thermal ablation to destroy that tissue. So that is uh, the interventions associated with the thoracic area in its very simplest form. Of course, we will tackle each of these topics in much more in depth, um, but this is you know, the, the primary interventions that pertain to the thoracic area.